Hey, 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 pedal people, it's Pedal Guy here. How you doing? In this action-packed episode, we're going to talk about a really exciting topic. Power supplies. If you're building your first pedal board and you don't know what kind of power supply to buy, well, you came to the right place and we're going to get started right now. Well, hey, it's Scott from the Pedal Guy here. How you doing? Well, we're all about pedal demos, pedal knowledge, and pedal sales. I love pedals and so do you. Now, before we get started, if this is your first visit to our channel, make sure you take a second and click on that subscribe button down there and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. And if you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow us so you can stay up to date with all of our activities because we do post daily and we'd love to hear from you. This is the second in our series on building your first pedal board. Our first episode, we talked about actually selecting the pedal board. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about power supplies. Now, it's not the most sexy thing on your pedal board, but it's certainly one of the most essential things on your pedal board. And one of the things I gotta stress right off the bat is this is where planning really comes into focus. Now, you can buy a pedal board that might be a little too small, and then you can jimmy your pedals around until you get a configuration that works for you. And that's kind of like what you can do to get around those kind of problems. But when it comes to the power supply, you really do need to think about how many pedals you plan to power at a single time. You also need to think about the types of outputs you need for those power outputs. Uh, you need to think about budget. Uh, you need to think about weight. You need to think about a lot of different things here. So the intention of this video is to make you aware of some of those factors, but also just to show you some of my favorite uh, power supplies that I show people here when uh, they're shopping at the pedal guy. Now, the first thing that I want you to ask yourself is this, how many pedals do you intend to power up with your power supply. Just think about that for a second. You wanna buy a power supply that you can grow with. Certainly there are ways you can get around it with like daisy chaining cables and all that. But here's the problem. When you start doing that, unless it's something that's designed specifically to encourage daisy chaining, you're gonna get noise. You're gonna get buzz because those are not isolated at all in any way, unless it's designed to be that way. And there are some cases where that's possible and where that's true. But here's the reality. The reality is you have four pedals today. Maybe you have five pedals tomorrow. Maybe you have 10 pedals a month from now or a year from now. Hey, buy them at the pedal guy, right? Uh, shameless plug, shameless plug. And in any case, you just wanna make sure you buy something you can grow with over time. Okay, so I'm recommending that wholeheartedly right off the bat. So just make sure you do that and you'll be very happy. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to look at the power requirements of your pedals that you already own uh, so that you can select the right power supply to meet those requirements. Uh, and what I'm talking about is I'm talking about voltages, uh, 9, 12, 15, or 18 volts, uh, 100 to 500 milliamps. Um, and of course, we're also talking about whether it needs AC or DC. You need to look at all that first so that you can make the most informed decision on which power supply to purchase. The last thing to consider, and of course, this is the factor we're gonna come back to a million times over, is the price. What is your budget? So just like we talked about last week with the pedal board itself, you gotta decide on a budget for your power supply. Now, the reality is you can get power supplies well under $100, that'll definitely do the job. So that's the good news. The bad news is that a lot of them in those lower price points, you really have to do your research because some of them are just pure garbage and they will just put a bunch of noise into your signal chain, which is exactly what you don't wanna do. So what I recommend doing is just do your research um, on what I talked about previously, which are the outputs and the power requirements, and then start looking at the power supplies that work in those parameters. Once you've figured that out, it will tell the tale at that point as far as what you need to consider spending for power supply. Now, fortunately, I'm gonna show you some power supplies that I have here that I've used for a while, some that I'm actually looking into right now, and a couple that I haven't even looked at yet, but I thought you might like to check out what it's all about. So let's go ahead and get to it. So looking down here are some of my favorite power supplies that I have checked out here at the Pedal Guy, and I just wanna make you aware of them. Maybe you've seen some of the unboxing videos I've done in years past, but these are pedal supplies that, uh, these are power supplies that I've actually used. So uh, far left here is the Micro Power from Moore. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it does power up to eight pedals on a single unit. They're all isolated um, and it takes an incredibly small footprint. And on top of that, it's very light. The box it comes in is not very light, but this unit is actually light 
and it's a metal casing. So that makes it pretty durable, uh, especially for road work. So this is something you might want to consider um, for a power supply requirement of say eight pedals or more because you could do probably a little bit of daisy chaining, although I wouldn't recommend that. But in any case, that's something to consider. The next one we're going to check out is the EBS AD9 Plus, which is this one right here. Now you probably thought it was connected to the Octopus here, but actually no, this is the power supply. This is a thousand milliamps. Um, so this means that this pedal, this power supply can actually power up to 20 pedals uh, via daisy chaining. Now I know I said earlier that daisy chaining wasn't always a good idea. This is one of those rare exceptions because this is all about hum free daisy chaining with the different pedals and it is under well under a hundred dollars. Um, so this is definitely something worth considering. Uh, you get this and a few daisy chain cables and you could pretty much power up an entire board quite easily. Again, it comes down to what are the power requirements of your board or of your pedals, I should say. But still, this is a really solid option. The next one we're going to look at is the Octopus by Ortega Guitars, which is this power supply right here. Now, the Octopus is a jack of all trades or a jack of two trades, I should say, because one thing it does is it is a power supply. You have uh, six output it's, um, that support 100 milliamps per. Um, and then you have two outputs, one on each side that supports 500 milliamps per. Additionally though, this is also a chromatic tuner. So this would go on top of your pedal board and it would serve two purposes. One, to power up your, your pedals, but two, to actually keep you in tune. So you have your input and your output. Um, you have your master uh, power uh, input right here on the back. Now, I, when I do uh, demos, um, at trade shows and things like that. This is typically the one that I use because in a showroom environment, it just makes it a lot easier if I have an easy way to tune my guitar at the same time. So this can actually save you a lot of trouble. And again, it's a metal, it's a metal casing, it's very durable, and it's also very light. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. So this might serve a very valuable purpose for you. The next power supply we're gonna check out is the Palomino from Outlaw FX. And that's this one here on the far right. Um, it's a metal casing, uh, very durable. It's very lightweight. It has four isolated outputs, each at 500 milliamps. Um, and the cool thing about the fourth output is that it has a switchable voltage out. Uh, so you can go between nine, 12 and 18 volts. Uh, you just simply have to use the switch on the back to determine which voltage you're going to output at. So that makes it incredibly versatile for the various types of pedals that you have on your board. Um, obviously, you need to make sure that it's it's compatible with what you're working with, but still having that extra uh, versatility can certainly come in handy down the road as you grow with your pedal board. The next power supply we're gonna check out is the Batpack 8000 from Palmer. Now, this is a rechargeable lithium battery power supply. So all of those problems about plug it into the wall, history, they're all gone. You don't have to worry about it at all. It's all off the grid. Um, so if you want to go portable, this is probably the power supply you want to check out. Now, I did an unboxing video on this some time back. Um, what I can tell you is a couple things. One, uh, it's got a USB port here on the side so you can actually charge your iPhone while you're playing your gig. How about that? Uh, it's got two outputs that will definitely take care of most of your pedal needs. Uh, and it can work for several hours on a single charge. Now, it also has mounting holes on it so it can fit easily underneath most pedal boards. The one problem you're gonna run into here and the one thing you do wanna consider with a, pedal, with a power supply like this is weight because this does weigh a bit more than the other supplies that I've shown you so far. So keep that in mind because as you add more pedals onto your board, you, you definitely wanna consider weight because you're gonna be schlepping that thing around. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, it's a great uh, solution. Well, that about wraps up our episode here for uh, choosing a power supply. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got one more for you. Check it out. So what if I showed you a product that would serve two purposes? One, it would be your pedal board. And two, it would also be your power supply. Well, I just so happen to have that product with me and it's called the Nomad by Outlaw Effects. And that would be this bad boy right here. This is the Nomad M128. And this is the best of both worlds because not only is it a really versatile pedal board into itself, it's got, it's, it's, uh, it's got a metal chassis, but it's still hollow, so it's very light. But it's also got a rechargeable power supply built into the back. 
let's take a closer look. All right, so here we are looking down at the Nomad itself. And as you can see, it's quite a large board. So it really will fit just about every kind of pedal you need. Um, and it's got, uh, it's all set up for Velcro. So you're good to go there. But, uh, and also, you know, it comes with a gig bag, so that helps things too. But here's the thing though, flip it up, and it's also a power supply here. So check this out. So this is a battery driven power supply. So you can work with, uh, you can work it in real time if you want to and just plug it into the wall and just do it that way if you'd like. Or what you can do is you can charge it up and you can use it up to 10 hours on a single charge. And it's still very lightweight. So everything I was talking about with the backpack, this is not, uh, one of those problems that you're going to have to solve. This has already been solved for you. It's, it's quite innovative when you get down to it. As far as the uh, feature set goes, you've got uh, all of these different 9-volt outputs here. Um, where you get to the last three here, you've got 12, 12, and then a selection between 18 and 24. You just simply need to use the switch on the back. It has, it has a, a, a power switch. It has a battery indicator. Um, it's incredibly lightweight, as I mentioned before, 600 milliamps, 2000 milliamps, 1000 milliamps. So really this will get the job done for you in so many different ways. Um, and I can't say enough about it is that um, this is one of those things that really is a good problem solver. Uh, it's a good utility. So it's definitely something you might want to consider if you're still at that first stage about thinking about what pedal board do I need to buy? Well, maybe consider this because you can actually get two things accomplished with this. And it's also priced to move. So, you know, life is good, isn't it? Once uh, once we use uh, what technology is offering us. It's pretty cool stuff. Well, that wraps up this episode of building your first pedal board. In the next episode, we're going to dig into cables. So come on back and let's talk about them cables. Well, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions, be sure to visit us at thepedalguide.com. But in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly videos and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by here at thepedalguide.com, where I love pedals and so do you.